Well, we're enjoying a nice sunset here and I am doing a planting under this locust tree right now. And I want to share a little bit about what we're planting under here and the concept of soft landing. So that's a term that maybe you haven't heard before, but a soft landing basically is a number of plants, hopefully more native plants, that are planted underneath trees so that when insects may fall down from the trees, they could actually have a nice little soft landing and pupate if they need to amongst the greenery. So I decided that I would actually do some native plantings, primarily native plantings under here. And I wanted to get more of the reds and yellow colors punctuated by white. So what we'll see here is I have this Aquilegia canadensis, and this is actually a, a cultivar that is a smaller variety. You'll see that the normal Aquilegia canadensis is actually here. And then we have some Jeffersonia diphylla as well. So that's the twin leaf it's called. And we have a number of others, um, Euonymus abovatus right here. It just is a creeping plant, which is pretty neat. And then, oh, I have a lot of other bulbs planted in here, including Uvularia, three species of, <laughs> ow, <laughs> three species of Uvularia, which is called bellwort. And gosh, there's a, there's a bunch of others. But I'm going to finish this up by planting Trillium. And Trillium are some of our native plants. And it was really fortuitous because American Meadows had an overproduction of Trillium. So we ended up getting some Trillium luteum, which is the yellow Trillium, Trillium uh, erectum, which is the red Trillium, Trillium grandiflorum, which is the white Trillium, and then also the painted Trillium, which the name escapes me right now for the scientific name. But essentially what I'm going to be doing is just finishing off some of these red and yellow Trillium here, because like I said, I really wanted a bit more of a red and yellow garden. And uh, these have started to emerge and you don't need to plant them super deep. I'm actually gonna put some bulb tone in here as well. So it, you know, some people will loosely call it a bulb and you could see that they're already emerging and you really only need to go a couple inches underneath the soil. And what's great about planting trillium underneath a tree like this is that trillium typically bloom in mid to late spring, usually before trees start to leaf out. That's their opportunity to be able to put out their leaves and their flowers. And they really love when trees drop their leaves and they have this kind of bed of, of humus and decaying leaf matter. And this is a perfect tree for that because as you might be able to see, the maple here to the left and the maple to the right are already putting out their leaves. But this locust is always really late. It's late to put out its leaves and it's uh, late to actually lose its leaves. And the other thing about the fact that this locust has a pinnate leaf, so it, it looks more like a feather, you know, for, for instance, and it provides a lot of light down, in, like dappled light down into the understory. So basically all I'm gonna do, you can see it's actually a little wet down here because uh, we've been getting quite a bit of rain. And I'm just gonna stick that in there. And you can see that these, perhaps again, overproduction of them, uh, they don't always look like this spindly, but they'll be able to recover from this. These are really healthy. None of these that I've gotten felt mushy or squishy in any kind of capacity. And you know, they might not bloom this year, it's spring, maybe they will, maybe they won't. But um, I had some that I planted last year and they just look phenomenal. I mean, if we could get trillium in bulk and see them emerge in the springtime, I mean, we might have to wait till next year, but that's okay. I'm patient. <laughs>
One thing I will say is that these trillium, you could plant them usually between eight to 12 inches apart. And typically you'll find trillium in woodland gardens. They don't like a tremendous amount of sun. They can handle quite a bit of shade or partial shade. So for us, this is pretty good. This is the only time that this area gets uh, sun is during the sunset. And sometimes we have cloud cover and uh, that's usually fine enough for these guys. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for the possibilities of having and attempting to do again this kind of soft landing. And I had to weed a bit of the area around here because the grass obviously pushes in. You could see some clumps of grass that are clumping up in here. And you'll also see a bit of multiflora rose. I actually found a couple seedlings of multiflora rose and I, I took that out as well. And uh, so hopefully this will start to fill out enough where I won't have to weed anymore. But that's a lot of planting and a lot of time for this to spread out. I have an area in our shade garden that has spread out really nicely and I only had to weed out two dandelions <laughs> this year. So my goal is to have this become a beautiful shade garden and soft landing for a number of insects. See, this is the type of grass that I, kind of clumper grass. It's pretty easy to take out when it's young, but still provides a bit of issue. There we go. All right, well, I think this is looking decent. I mean, it's you have to have some kind of imagination for this, but this is really one of our first gardens kind of underneath the canopy of the of a, one of our main trees to do this soft landing but we're doing some more soft landings in our front garden and i guess you could ar also argue that under our uh, pine shade garden we have soft landings there because we have at least 100 different species of plants that are planted around there and like i said don't even have to weed <laughs> underneath the tree circles anymore when you actually have some of these beautiful shallow rooted plants. All right, well, that's it for today. And you know, so much is happening here with the gardens now that May has hit and we'll have to give you some updates as we go. Now that spring is here, we've been really busy with renovations and the gardens. So we'll be giving you updates as we go. Now, if you enjoy our videos, we ask that you like, subscribe, and consider hitting the notifications bell so you know when new videos release. Plus, your support makes a difference, no matter where you are. We commit 10% of our Google AdSense proceeds as reinvestment back into the Finger Lakes community, and that's matched by our partners over at Espoma Organic. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.